hi guys welcome back to melissa loves orchids so i made a little video and this is just to go as a little introduction um just wanted to let you know in case you didn't know there are some shows coming very very soon this weekend is the fairchild tropical gardens um orchid show and that is called orchids in bloom you don't want to miss it and i know i look like this because allergies or i might be catching a cold you could hear it it's okay i'll get over it i'll be fine um but um that's coming up so that's exciting i think the week after that there's also another one at ofis so that's always exciting and what was i gonna say oh and my sponsor ken at the orchid supply store is sending out a box of rescue fowls i love those so they are what he calls the the icu rescue fowls so yes i can't wait to get those and i want to show you what i'm doing i am taking an area where it's um filtered sunlight okay in the front of my house where there is a tree and i am inserting them and attaching them to that tree it's gonna look so gorgeous i am telling you i know they need time to acclimate but i'm gonna show you the ones that i have out there when I get the new ones and we're gonna put the new ones on. So that's exciting, that's coming up and unboxing. And if you need any orchid supplies, go ahead and reach out to Ken. Look at the website, www.orchidsupplystore.com and you can get 12% off. Just put in my name, Melissa, two S's, and you can get 12% off. So he has bark, he has baskets, he also has orchids. So you might wanna check it out. He has um, all kinds of pots and everything you need for your orchids at home. His van does. I saw that on the website. So check him out and um, use my code Melissa for 12% off. And now you are gonna see a beautiful ah, bloom show. I, I have this whole video just for her. Her right over there. I know you can't see her, but stay tuned. Hi guys, it is Melissa. Welcome back to my channel. Today is gonna be a short, quick, um, beautiful little showing of this one special orchid here. Her name is Dendrobium spectabili. So um, I did a little bit of research and I wanted just to tell you what I found out. So from the internet, it describes this orchid as being a collector's orchid and it has an alien-like bloom. Look at that. Do you agree? I think I agree. It can be pricey, is what it says, and it comes from Papua New Guinea and the Solomon Island Islands. So that's interesting. It does uh, need high levels of light. You can compare it to Vandalite. So right here, at this part of my pergola, it does get a lot of highlight. Okay, the sun is kind of going down, so it's getting afternoon sun. And my vandas over there get bright morning sun. So, I think she likes it. She blooms beautifully, I can't take credit for that. But the credit goes to Josh Jones at the Orchid Den. He raised her and then I bought her, so she seems to be liking it, plus the beautiful artwork, the thimble pot from Joshua the Orchid Den. Here is the tag. Look at that. There's their information from Jacksonville, Florida. He also sells online and he's at a lot of shows. So hit him up if you want something special. All of my um, orchids that I've purchased before are doing very, very well. So on to what else the dendrobium needs. So when it's when I looked up about the light, it refers to the amount of light on the internet. It says five to eight foot candles to 10 to 11 foot candles, 100 feet candles. So if you know what that means, then you can use that. I use a little um, light meter slash water meter sometimes when I, when I question myself and I'm not sure. Some people use the shadow test. So figure out the light, because the light is super, super important for the orchids to bloom and be healthy. And they'll let you know, you'll see things happening if they don't like the light. So 
I put it here with very, very high light and no leaves have burnt. There's no reddening or anything like that. The canes are like that. So if you thought, oh no, those canes look weird, that's the way they are. And I think they actually look very distinct and different and I am appreciating them very much. So it grows to medium to large size. The growing season is April to October. And then that's when you would increase the water and the fertilizer. The family is Latorias. So the Nandrobium families that they belong to are the Latorias. Um, from, from when they are deflast, I think, it could take four to five years to grow to flowering age. Okay, and um, flowering size should be when you see from four to seven canes. This one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven and a half, I guess. Eleven and a half. So this is a pretty big specimen that I have and I'm really happy about it. This um, bloom spike is open and I still have another one yet to open. So I'm excited about that. I'm also excited about the beautiful scent because you think something like this would smell a little strange but it smells beautiful like a light jasmine like the spring air it is so delicious i love it i love it i love it so uh let's see let's see it can grow to be three feet or more in height and the flower spikes come from one little black nub on the side on little black nubs so before they become a flower spike you're going to see little black nubs i guess coming from something that might look like it starts like that maybe because when i bought it it was in full spike okay and what else did i learn so in october you're supposed to reduce the uh, fertilizer it has a long lasting flower so this is march what are we march fifth so let's see this basically just opened a couple days ago let's see how long it lasts and the scent is described as honey sweet jasmine okay water when approaching dryness so don't let it dry out completely when approaching dryness okay so i asked um josh should i water this every day he said i wouldn't but maybe every other day depending on what you put it in so i'll tell you what i put it in i took it out of its plastic pot of course because i feel like i'm allergic to plastic pots and i take everything out of its plastic pot and it is basically bare root in there with some lava rock and a little bit of charcoal. That's all that's in there. So I'm gonna attempt to water her every other day, every two days, and see how she likes it so far. I think it's it's a good um, schedule or whatever. Um, the roots should be brown and the canes should be brown too, so don't be alarmed if the canes are brown. So that's it, that's all I have learned. Let me know if I've said anything that um, is different than what you know. I'm happy to hear your feedback. What do you think? Is this a must have? I think so. If you don't have a Spectabili, I think you should go out and get one. If you have everything looking normal, this is one of those abnormal flowers that everybody's impressed with. I think it's gorgeous, of course. So that one and the, um, the Pathiopetalum that I got are both very alien looking but this one has a scent that just makes you wanna keep smelling. And that's it for today, guys. Thank you for joining me. I hope you like and subscribe. Coming up, we have a lot of shows, so stay tuned for that. Let me know what you think. Do you have a step, uh, spe uh, spe oh my gosh. Do you have a spectabili? What's been your um, opinion of it? Do you like it? Is it a must have? I think so. So I will see you next time or hear you next time. Actually, you'll hear me next time. Have a gorgeous day. Before we go, I have another little update on my Myrmicophila grandiflora, which is a species and I got her from, oh my gosh, I believe this was either Waldor or Frau, one of those two only cost me about $20 and I was worried putting her on this mount with nothing, nothing but a zip tie. But let me show you what she's doing. Look at this. This is a Roxy mount, an Orchids 365 mount. And she seems like she is taking hold. So I love it. 
I have a little leaf that is turning red and I don't know if it's because the sun hits her, but she's supposed to get a lot of sun. Those pseudobulbs look like they are a little bit, I don't know, thirsty, except for this new one back here. They look like they're a little thirsty, but the roots look like they're coming in. So shall I put some moss on there? Should I do that? I mean, I water her every day. So let me know in the comments, what do you think I should do? Add some moss in here, just put some moss or maybe some Spanish moss or some sphagnum. I don't know, I haven't decided. Or just let her continue to acclimate. I don't wanna change up her situation if she likes it. But yeah, that's my Myrmacophila grandiflora.